Right then, my friends. So we've seen how to use interfaces to define the basic structure of objects in the last lesson. Now I want to show you how we can use interfaces alongside classes as well. So what I'm going to do is create a new folder inside source called interfaces. This is where all of our interface files are going to live. And I'm going to create a new one called hasformatter.ts. So inside here, I'm going to create a new interface. I'm also going to export it so we can use it in other files as well. So say export first. Then we want to export an interface which is called has formatter. Now inside here, we can define the different properties or methods that anything which implements or uses this interface should have. Now, I don't want to add any properties. I just want to add a method. And that method is going to be a format method. And this format method should return a string. OK, so that's it. That's the only thing that I want this interface to ensure that whatever uses it has this format method. So I can use this with a class now to say that a class must have this format method if it uses this interface, right? So if I go to our invoice class over here, I can say that I want to implement the has formatter interface. Now, first of all, I need to import it. So let me say import double curly braces from and we need to come out of the classes folder then into the interfaces folder and then it's has formatter.js okay and then we want to import has formatter from that now if we want to implement the has formatter interface inside a class then we can say implements right here and then whatever interface that we want to implement inside this class so has formatter and now we're saying look this class must follow the structure of not that the has formatter interface so it must have this format method inside it which returns a string now in our case it does so this passes there's no error it successfully implements that okay so it's following this structure and we're just ensuring that we have to follow this structure so that in the future we can be sure that every object that we create using this class follows this has formatter interface so if we create an array for example in the future and we only want objects to be added to that which implement this has format interface we can be sure that anything that goes in there using this class has that has formatter interface I hope that makes sense. It will become a bit clearer later on when we start to use this elsewhere. But anyway, we've now implemented that. If we didn't have this, then we'd get an error. OK, so we have to have that format method. All right, so let's try creating another class which also implements this has formatter interface. So I'm going to copy all this right here and I'm going to create a new file called payment.ts. And I'm going to paste that right in here. And this class is going to be called payment. And then the client is no longer going to be a client, but a recipient instead. And down here, we want to output recipient instead of client. So it's pretty much the same. But instead of a client property, we now have a recipient property. Because when we make a payment, it's going to someone. When we raise an invoice, we're getting money from someone. And we'll change the text as well. So we'll say is owed because we owe it to them. So it would say something like Yoshi is owed X amount for whatever he did. OK, so we have those two classes and they both implement the has formatter interface. So in the future, for example, we could create some variables. Let me first import a couple of things up here. We want invoice. We also want payment. And that comes from the payment JavaScript file. And we also want the has formatter. So import and it's going to be has formatter. And that's going to be from dot forward slash interfaces forward slash has formatter dot JS. OK, so we're importing those three things. Now, imagine we create a couple of variables. So I'll say let doc one be of type has formatter so we're saying here in the future this variable must b 
of type has formatter, it must implement that interface. And I'll do the same for another variable, doc2. And now what I could do is create a new instance of the invoice and store it in doc1 because we know that the invoice implements this has formatter interface. And then for doc2, we could set that equal to a new payment using this class because we also know that that payment class implements has formatter. So that's absolutely fine. They're both of that type, if that makes sense. So I'm going to say now doc1 is equal to new invoice and the first parameter is going to be Yoshi that's the client for the invoice the second parameter is just going to be the details web work and the third one the amount which is 250 and then under that I'll make a new payment so I'll say doc2 is equal to a new payment and that also implements the has formatter interface this time it's going to be to Mario and that's going to be for plumbing work and the amount is going to be 200. So that's fine. Doc1 can be an invoice. Doc2 can be a payment because they both implement this interface. So this is just making sure that whatever object in the future is stored inside this Doc1 variable and this Doc2 variable has to implement this interface. It just structures our code a little bit more and makes things a little bit more secure for ourselves in the future. Now, another thing, if we wanted to create an array which only holds objects which implements this has format interface, we can do. So I could say let docs be some kind of has formatter array and initialize it to be a new array. Now we're saying that only objects which implement this interface can go inside that array. We can say down here docs.push and it's going to be doc1. And that's fine because that implements the has formatter interface and docs.push doc2, which is also fine because that implements the has formatter interface. Okay, so we're just restricting what can go in here now. And it can come from several different classes, this object, as long as they both implement that has formatter interface. And that way we can be sure that every object inside here has a format function which returns a string so when we're cycling through this we can be guaranteed that we can use the format function on every string now so that's the benefit let me just log these to the console so i'm going to say console.log the docs and save it let me just see if this works and we can see we have an invoice and a payment inside here awesome all right so now we know how to do all that why don't we put it to good use in our project down here and let me get rid of these as well. We don't need those invoices. Down here, inside this form, when we add an event listener, and that's submit, we're getting all of the values from these different things right here, the type, to and from, details, and the amount. Now what I want to do is check the type first of all. Is it gonna be either an invoice or a payment? And then create a new invoice or payments object. So what I'm gonna do first is down here, say let doc be some kind of variable which implements has formatter. So in the future, this can only be an object which implements that interface. Then under that, I'm gonna do an if check. So I'll say if, and then the type, which is this thing right here, remember, the type is what they choose right here. If the type dot value is gonna be equal to invoice, at that point, we're going to say that we want to create a new invoice object and store it inside doc. So we'll say that doc is equal to a new invoice right here. And the first argument is going to be the to from. So if we go to invoice, we can see that the first one is the client and that's from this to from field right here. So we'll say to from dot value. The second one is going to be the details. So details.value and the third one is the amount. So amount and then we say value as number. Like so, because it expects a number to be the type. Okay, so that's the new invoice right there. Otherwise, we're going to create a new payment object instead. So we'll say doc is equal to new payment and the same things go in. So I'm going to grab this 
and paste it right here because we need a string, which is to from, then the details, then the amount, because the same things go in here. We have a recipient, which is a string, the details, and then the amount. So now down here, instead of logging out all of these things, I can console.log the doc, right? So let me save that and come over here. And when we submit something, we'll say payment to Yoshi. And that's going to be for doing some marketing. And uh, the amount is going to be £100. Add it. And we can see we have a payment object right here. The recipient is Yoshi. The details doing some marketing. The amount is 100 If I create an invoice to Mario for doing some website work, and that is going to be for 200 and add that, we now have an invoice object. Awesome. So now we have these objects available to us when a user is submitting this form. In the next video, what we'll start to do is create a class which can take these objects and render them to the screen.